What up, y'all? It's DJ Envy. And I am Gia Casey. And this is another edition of the Casey Crew. Welcome. Hello, 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 beautiful people. I'm going to start off by letting you know that I am tired. And the reason I'm telling you that is because Gia works me to death. That is right. <laughs> so this weekend, uh, we were out in Tampa, me and little Logan, uh, doing daddy and son type of things, you know. We were just chilling, you know drinking, smoking, you know, do it, do it with fellas things. Logan was drinking soda. Yeah, he was. <laughs> but I actually took Logan to the Super Bowl. So we had a, a great time. Shout out to Pepsi. Uh, shout out to everybody out in uh, Tampa. We had an amazing time. Uh, I, I work a lot. So those moments I get to spend with my son, is it's, it's always amazing. Uh, he told me that he doesn't want mom to go anywhere with me anymore. He said he wants to go to Atlanta for all-star he really just boxed you out he don't want to fuck with he you he really like that. just kicked me off of the whole all-star weekend he definitely did that's okay i wasn't going anyway yeah he definitely did. but it's it's interesting how he just swooped in and is trying to take my place now i'm he's and trying, i'm not, he's trying to take all my sexy time and you're not what i'm not taking him to atlanta oh why i thought you were gonna say i'm not mad at him oh no 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 i'm not taking him you know why what not? i haven't slept with a roommate in like 20 years <laughs> So when we went to Tampa, you know, usually when I take him, um, what I try to do is I try to get a suite. So that way he can sleep on the couch on the outside and I sleep on the bed. But there were no suites and the suites were too expensive. And I'm cheap if you haven't realized that. So we got two queens and sleeping with a boy, like a grown ass man is like. I hear him when he goes to the bathroom, like, <laughs> so he's his son. I'm sleeping and he got his TV on. Like, it's just, he's snoring. It's just like, it just Logan feels snores? funny. He does snore. He doesn't oh, snore wow. as loud as I do, but he definitely does snore. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Usually I'm used to, I'm used to, when I go on the road, I'm used to walking around naked. Like, that's me. Like naked, turn the heat up, relax. I can't do that. Mm -hmm. You know, then he wear, he doesn't wear a shirt, which makes me feel uncomfortable or insecure. So I didn't like that <laughs> at all either. Uh huh. But we so did. For, so for those reasons, you're going to box him out of future trips, unless he pays for his own room. <laughs> I don't want him with me. So, so uh, yeah. Uh -huh. So shout out to everybody I ran into in Tampa. Uh, hopefully, we'll be back. But I think we actually will be back for uh, WrestleMania. WrestleMania is big down there in Tampa, so they invited me back to do some shows. So WrestleMania, WrestleMania invited you? No, the people in Tampa invited me for some clubs, but it's during WrestleMania because WrestleMania is so big. You're not going to WrestleMania, are you? I am not, no. Oh, okay. And if I do, I'm going to bring Lil Jackson with me because I'm sure he'll love it. So you're going to be he boxed out again. He absolutely will. I yeah. don't mind. I'm, I'm semi-quarantined regardless, so I'm not really traveling mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. enjoying anywhere other than my house. Okay. So. And the uh, last thing is uh, Logan is taking his uh, driving test this week. Mm -hmm. So he's excited about that. So we had to do um, parallel parking. And I couldn't remember how to teach him how to do parallel parking. I know how to do it from feeling, you know, but I couldn't necessarily teach him how to do it. So good luck to Logan. You didn't line up the um, side view mirrors and then once you reverse and then your door is at the, and that's when you cut. I like, tried. You remember all that? But then I remembered some cars are smaller than, and than others, some cars are bigger. So I tried to explain him that, but it wasn't working out. So I just told him it's a feeling like you have to feel your way in and feel your way out. <laughs> That was your method of teaching? That's it. You have to just, just feel it. feels way. good. Feel, 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 I understand. Feel, yeah. It all makes sense now. All right. But anyway, let's get the uh, show popping. Today, we have so many emails. We're backed up on emails because Gia likes to talk and she likes to be very, very thorough. Oh, the Ray Dunn people out there, I got your message. Very smart what you did. I got your message. What happened? And I erased it fast because, you know, Ben's being my DMs too, but... <laughs> I Wait, got your what message. Happened? What happened? Nah, nothing. Just what? She's not even here right she's now. Like, oh, she's right there. oh, I thought she did. She's laying down underneath the camera, y'all. So okay, what happened? If you don't know, Gia likes Ray Dunn. Ray Dunn is they know. Okay, just for some some new people, Ray Dunn is a, a manufacturer that makes pottery. Right, you can find it in TJ Maxx, Home Goods, Marshalls, etc., etc., etc. Things are hard to find. Like they're very hard to find. Not expensive. They can range. No, from, certain things are hard to find. Right, but they range from five to thirty dollars. Um, but she found me something called funny bunny. You know, you know what that is? It's a mug with the bunny ears. Yeah, I got it. See? Yeah. It's red though. No, it's not red. You have funny bunny already? It's not red because all Easter is either white or pastel colors. You have a pastel color? You have it? I do. All right. Well, you got that already. So 
Maybe about something else. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I don't have Funny Bunny, but I do have Easter yeah, mugs with the funny. toppers and stuff. Well, oh, so now you don't want Funny Bunny? I do, I do. I would like yeah, Funny Bunny. Want. It is a unicorn. It's hard to get. My done people said it's very hard to get. But anyway. And <laughs> I do want that. <laughs> so we're going to get to some emails. I had a lot of emails and some updates. So I think a couple of weeks ago, we tell you about uh, this woman who found out her dad was cheating on the mom. Remember oh, that? yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if you don't remember... Um, do we have the name of that podcast? I don't remember the name of the podcast. We'll find it and SDOT will drop it right here for you. So what happened was this daughter found out that her dad was cheating on the mom. The way that she found out was she was checking some stuff on the phone bill and seeing another number on the phone bill. It was like, what number is this? I don't know this number. And when she called, she found out it was the dad's side chick. And she asked us, should she tell the mom? Well, here is the update. Which is, But you know what's weird? And I guess it's just our family. But if Madison <clears throat> got my phone bill and seen an extra number on it, I don't think Madison would even think about it. I don't think it's just that she saw an extra number. Remember, he was a serial cheater to begin with. Mm. Remember? So she might have been looking for any signs or clues that would lead her in that direction. It, but even so, like... Like you get a thousand calls a day, so every number would look funny. So that wouldn't even... No, no. She went be, on the phone bill and looked at a different number, meaning let's say there's six phones on oh, the bill. Okay. So she looked at the number mm -hmm. and was like, this, I don't know this number. So she called the number to see what it was, and it was this girl. Right. But again, she probably already suspected her dad. Because I have, a, we have about eleven numbers on our phone bill. Yeah, so and I don't know. That's any not of the even numbers. something. If I saw the phone bill and there was an extra number there, I wouldn't even. I wouldn't pay it any mind. I wouldn't notice. It just it would go right over my head because we're just not even that in that kind of space. So I wouldn't even take notice to that. And side note, I just want to play this game right fast. What's Madison's phone number? Do you know it? No clue. I know it's eight six two number. What's Logan's phone number? I don't know anybody's number. I only know one of your numbers. Which one? And that's only because I always have to give it out to people as like your one-off number. You know what I thought about the other day? And you should do this test because we really should know the numbers. I only, I only know three numbers. Four numbers. In life. In life. Four okay. phone numbers. Your mother's number. I know my mother's home number. Mm -hmm. I, don't know home, I don't know my mother's cell number or my dad's cell number. I know your mom's cell number. I don't know that. So I know those two numbers. Go I ahead. know your house number, your mom's house number. Okay. I know that too. Wait. I Yep, I still know it. Mm -hmm. I know your cell number. Okay. And I know Aunt V's number. Those okay. are the only four numbers I know. I don't know Ben's number. I don't know Maddie's number. I don't know yeah, Logan's no. number. I don't know my dad. Like, that is weird. We're so used to just calling on the phone that we don't remember any numbers. But back, now I sound like an old person. Back in my day, you would have to know all the numbers because you'd have to go to pay phone and use it. So you'd have to know everybody's mm -hmm. number. But I don't know any money. You know what else kind of hit me the other day? Mm hmm punched in an address and navigation and I'm on my merry way. And for some reason, I was thinking about how the hell we got around when we were younger. With no navigation. Without, without any navigation. It was like easy. we're driving state to state. I remember that when I used to work for Craftmatic and I had to go on all of those appointments, I used to have a map book and a map booklet in my glove compartment. Like my map, my mm -hmm. map book would just sit on my passenger seat and I would get somewhere and I have to pull out the map and figure out where I was. And you know what I mean? You remember the days of like stopping and asking someone for directions? You know, or we used to use things like make a right at McDonald's. Yeah, but make doesn't a left that seem at the third so light. archaic it and does. bonkers right now? It just does. the idea of that just seems so beyond me. Like, I don't even know how we existed like that because we have all of these creature comforts now, you know? Yeah. I mean, we should, we should go back to those days. No, just we to, shouldn't. Just for fun. Never. Like the other day I'm like, babe, <laughs> Never, ever. I'm like, babe, we should drive to Atlanta. She was like, I'm not driving with you. You, uh, you can drive. I, I'm going to take a plane. But we used to drive everywhere. Drive to Virginia, drive to Atlanta. We used to drive everywhere. Drive, drive to Florida, drive to South Carolina. Those days everywhere. are long gone. I'm not driving anywhere past Connecticut at this point. Connecticut right. is as far as I'm going. Well, here is the update. Hey, Gia and Envy. So here's an update. My sister and I finally told our mother about my dad adding another number to our family. Hold pay. on. So what does that mean? That means he didn't do what he said. We don't know. He was going to do. We don't know. Because remember. He wanted a little time. He but, needed a little time. But we don't know if she gave okay, him the time. Okay, go ahead. I'm all ears. We waited a month to tell. 
We were scared as fuck, but we realized that he wouldn't tell us, so we had to do it. It's uncomfortable to be involved in your parents' business, but we finally told, and she definitely was shocked about it, to say the least. I think that was her last straw. Anyways, we feel like the side chick is pregnant, but there is a baby out there in these streets. We see numbers that he contacts and... and we see numbers that he contacts, and last year he made phone calls to a court in Michigan where the side chick is from. The area code on the plan is from a Michigan number. Oh, yes, we did our investigation. Envy, I remember you saying that you think it might be an open relationship. Well, that's a definite no. Told you. I'm just saying. I'm just throwing everything out there. That's all. <laughs> Maybe mommy was like, mom was into it, but I, uh -huh. apparently she wasn't. However... She told us information that was devastating, which was that he's been unfaithful since we were young kids. I was like, what the fuck? We have been living in a lie. Overall, I think this whole situation is a hot mess. My mom told us she's been planning to divorce him for years. Now that I'm an adult, we had conversations about why she stayed. I think I can understand her. I believe it was a financial reason and maybe she couldn't afford to raise us on our own. All I know is that she wants a divorce now. She's been stacking her money and planning for this to happen for a while now. It's crazy though, because when I think of how in my, how me and my siblings grew up, we live in a great neighborhood. We're financially stable. We went to the best schools, nice cars, and didn't have anything traumatizing happen to us. But now, as an adult, I feel like this whole situation is traumatizing. I'll never trust my father again. I know, I now or again, and I know our relationship will never be the same. You meant to say, I know I'll never, our relationship will never be the same. But am I wrong for still caring about him and his well-being? I know he's depressed and depression is real. You'll never know what's going on in someone's head. I know he made mistakes, but I just want to make sure he's okay. It's all just sad, honestly. And Gia, I agree with what you said. When someone cheats, we are all affected because I feel the pain a hundred times worse my, than my mom. My mom seems like she's handling it okay. Well, maybe she's used to his mess, but to us, it's so shocking. Therapy is calling my name. I will say this. It's your dad. At the end of the day, no matter how many times your dad has made a mistake, how many times your dad has fucked up, how many uh, stupid decisions and stupid things that your dad has done, he's still your dad and still your father, still raised you, still took care of you, still took you to your practices and, and made it to your games and still did things that he was supposed to do as a father. As uh, your mother's husband, he was horrible. Um, he's still your dad. Uh, if I was in a situation and my dad did the same thing to my mom, um, <laughs> after it was all out, all out in the open, I would have a, a conversation with my dad about how it made me feel, which I'm sure you did already. Um, and then what I would do is I how would. How do you think it would make you feel? Me? Yeah. I would make. I think it would probably the same way that she has. You know, you look at your parents a certain way, um, and if that happens, it has to be a conversation. Nobody in this world is perfect, and your dad fucked up. That doesn't make your dad less of a father, in my opinion. Um, you know, we forgive so many people for so many things, right? We forgive friends for fucking up. We forgive people for, for crossing us. We forgive all these other things. <clears throat> but in this world, in my opinion, is life is short. Your dad is older. I, I'm not sure how old your dad is, but he has to be between 60 and 80. Um, in my opinion, just based off of your email and how old I think you are. So your dad might not have too many years left on this planet. Uh, I'm sure you want to have kids one day and uh, I'm sure your dad wants, you know, you would love to, for your kids to meet their grandfather and all those other things. So uh, I would have those conversations, uh, maybe go to therapy like you want to go to. And then uh, I feel and this is just me that once you get it all out, forgive your dad. And when I say forgive your dad, that doesn't mean forgive your dad. Dad, oh, we're going to have a big Christmas dinner. No, things are going to change. And you know who your dad is as a person when it relates to your mom. Um, of course, your mom is will always stand in front of your dad in this situation. But I would forgive and I would make sure that my kids and that you still take care of your dad in certain <clears throat> aspects. Um, of course, you're going to look at him a little less than because it is what it is. 
But that's what I would do if I was in your situation. I mean, yeah, your dad fucked up, but it's still your dad. Um, he did some, he made some mistakes that, and did, they made some decisions that were horrible. But I would forgive and I would take care of my dad. That's what I would do. Uh, I am that type of person. Gia knows that I'm, I'm, that, I'm that type of person. Uh, Gia, on the other hand, I think will hold a grudge because that's who she is. She doesn't you care. You think if I'm grudgeful? <laughs> what? You think I'm grudgeful? Yes. In a word? Yes? Yeah, absolutely. You think I'm grudgeful? Yeah. Wow. That's interesting. Uh -huh. um, what do you think makes me grudgeful? I'm actually shocked that you think that about me. All right. In relation. How, I'm sorry. How do you um, define the word grudge first? I want to make sure that we have the same definition. of. Okay. Word. I'll break it down. Okay. Me, my mother and father got into an argument and we didn't talk for like, what, four months? Yeah. Um, if that was you, we still wouldn't be talking right now. That's I'm, you. I'm the reason why you guys started talking again. Right. But now switch that. You and your mom was beefing for a while and you wasn't talking to your mom for a minute. Yeah. That was 11 years ago. Right. But I had ago. to force you to call your mom. Mm -hmm. I don't think you would have called your mom if I didn't necessarily force you. You don't think I would have ever called my mom? No. Come on, Rashawn. Yeah. You and your brother were beefing for a while and you didn't speak to him in 10 years. We weren't beefing. He did something that I didn't like. That's holding a grudge. You held that and you was not going to call him for... Um, you would have been 90 and you wouldn't have called him. What's your definition of grudge? Because I look at things a little bit differently. Grudge means something happened and you just don't fuck with somebody. Like you hold that grudge. Like I'm not fucking with him. I'm not calling him. I'm not speaking to him. I'm not texting him. If he passes me on the street, I give him a head nod and that's it. That's a grudge. And that's what you would have done to your mother and your brother. Um, that's what I would do to anybody. But it's different when it's your family, especially no, when you're close to family. to me it's not different. To me it is. And this is how I look at it. Um, I always say, I'm always, a, I'm always about energy and intention. Correct. If a person has good energy and good intentions, then I'm happy to have someone in my space. Um, I'm happy to engage with someone. Um, two simple things. If someone wrongs me intentionally, and knowingly, where there's no miscommunication, everything is understood, and they follow through with doing something that they know is going to hurt or harm me, first, we have a problem, okay? Now, let's say that that problem has come to light. Mm -hmm. I know what they did, they know what they did, they know that I know what they did, if an apology or some type of reckoning doesn't take place at that point, then we have another problem. So See? I can forgive. I can forgive, but I forgive for myself. The name of this podcast is going to be I Hold Grudges, Fuck You and My Mama. But go ahead. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> we got to dissect that in a second. Um, <laughs> Wait, write that down, Ben. I hold grudges. Fuck me and my mama. Not your mama and my mama. Okay. <laughs> um, so that's the second problem. So I forgive for myself. I don't forgive to relieve you of any burden. You probably would be relieved of a burden knowing that you are forgiven if you're someone that cares about me even though you've wronged me. But I forgive for myself. I don't want to walk around with that problem or those two problems on my back. I don't want to walk around uh, being affected. I don't want to walk around being angry or being miserable or carrying the stress. I don't want my subconscious, even if I think I'm okay or that I put it behind me, I don't want my subconscious walking around with that stress. Mm -hmm. So I forgive so that I can let it go. But I'm not forgiving for you. Or for anybody else. So do I forgive? Yes, I've learned, and I had to learn how to forgive. You know, I remember my first um, experience with true forgiveness was maybe I don't know. Madison was eight, 
and I got into a huge, um, I don't even know what to call it. It was a debacle with um, someone that was a close friend of mine at the time. And she acted completely out of sorts and was a thousand percent wrong, but she couldn't control herself. And it actually almost became physical. She actually approached me and threatened my well being. It was awful. And all the while, I told her that she was wrong and that she was going to regret this. And in about an hour or so, when she calmed down, she was going to see everything plainly and feel terribly about what she did. But by then, it would be too late. All of that played out exactly the way that I thought it was going to. And when I tell you this girl was sorry, she was sorry. She apologized. She owned everything that she did. And even after I told her that I forgave her and that I meant it, she spent maybe another year trying to make it up, make it up to me. Um, sent, I don't know if you remember, you, you know what I'm talking about, right? I don't. Oh, um, I'll remind you later, but sending me, uh, you know, those packages of mead and whatnot that you send during the holidays and whatnot. She did that. She tried to take me out to dinner. She tried to cook me homemade food and leave it on our doorstep, like anything that she could do. So she also tried to make up for it, but that was my first experience. I remember. Yeah, no. Okay. That was my first experience with real forgiveness with anyone because anyone before that you wrong me. I just cut you off. And that taught me how to forgive. So I know how to forgive. When you say that I hold a grudge, um, everybody knows the saying or a comparable saying that, you know, just because I forgive you doesn't mean that I have to accept you back into my life. Yeah, but I it doesn't have to mean that there's certain people that those you certain do. people should apologize and make amends for what they did. Yeah. They should own what they did. Hold on one second. I can't, I can't let someone wrong me and then treat it as though it didn't happen and then carry on as though nothing happened and call you or text you or whatever. What does that make me? I feel as though that makes me foolish. I feel as though that makes anybody foolish and in I'm, a sense. I'm fine with being foolish when it comes to family. Like I'm not like there's certain things like my parents are mm-hmm. old. They raised me. They did everything possible for me to make sure that I was safe. I would, they tried to put me in the best schools that they can afford. I was the first person to go to college in my family. So if they do something that hurts me, I can hold that grudge. <clears throat> but at the end of the day, when they die, is it worth me saying, damn, I wish I would have just forgot about it. Cause life's too short. And I am that type of person. I, I especially with them. Mm-hmm. Especially with my parents, with, with family that's close to me or people that's close to me, I can let things slide because I feel like life's too short. But you let a lot of things slide I do. with a lot of people. I do. And I, as a witness of that, have watched people become repeat offenders uh-huh. when it comes to you. You <clears throat> are very non confrontational and you like to live as low stress as possible. Right. Because when I go, I go too far though. You don't want to deal with problems. You don't Mm -hmm. want to deal with angst between you and another person. So I feel as though you consciously sometimes and subconsciously other times let things go. Correct. And I think it's more so for you than for anybody else, but for a different set of reasons, I think it's because you don't want to deal with it. You can't, you have so much on your back on a daily basis as it is that you can't deal with disliking somebody. No, for me. And you can't deal with a grudge. No, for me, it's, it's like this, right? Unless it's extreme. For me, it's like when I go, I go too far. You do. So from stopping me from going too far, I back myself up from the situation because I know I will go too far. That is true. So a lot of times I like to try <laughs> to play chess and checkers because once I go, I can't, I can't stop. Like the other day I was on the phone, right? And Gia was with me and I got fed up. It was just a bad um, day. It and was I, a bad day. And I was biting. If, if anybody who got, who, who came at me sideways, <laughs> I told him a new asshole, right? 
And I just don't tear a new asshole. I rip your asshole out, stick my hand up your ass, and pull your heart out. That's who I am that day, right? But that I, day, I go too far, yeah. right? That's who I am. When, it, when it's time, I go that far. And <clears throat> somebody caught it. And it is what it is. But I try not to go that way because once I go that way, I go all the way. Now it's like when I see you, it's on site. What you want, what you want to do. It is what it is. And I try not to go that far. Um, so when when people cross me or they do foul or sucker shit, I just kind of it's funny. I make a mental note and then I forget. And then I don't remember why I don't fuck with you. That is so true. I do that all the time. That is so true. And yeah. then Gia be like, you know, you don't fuck with them. And I'd be like, yeah, why? Wow. I don't remember. You'd be, be like, really? What happened? I'd be like, that motherfucker did this, 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 this. I'm like, what? <laughs> But I forgot by that time. Like, you remember when they cut off your pinky toe that time? That's the reason why you don't have a pinky toe anymore. Yeah, but that's... You're like, really? That's what happened? Yeah, but <laughs> people, niggas have shit on me crazy, like diarrhea shit on me. And I let a lot slide. And you forget the rest. And I forget the rest all the time. I don't let anything slide. I know. That's not in my personality. And it's because I feel that for the most part, we are controlled beings and we're not stupid. We know what we're doing. And I feel as that as human beings, we give other people slack as though they don't know how stupid they actually are. Oh, they didn't know what they were doing. Oh, they didn't they didn't mean that when they said that. Oh, you know what? I I, I don't I don't think that they had any bad intentions. They just don't know any better. They knew better. They had a bad intention. They were trying to be slick. But they expect you to play devil's advocate because most people don't want that stress. Most people don't want that friction and people take advantage of that. I believe that people know exactly what they're doing most of the time. I'm not saying that, you know, I'm not mm -hmm. speaking absolutely. I'm just saying that if you have bad intentions and you know what you're doing, then you have to stand in that and you have to deal with the consequences. And I'm not going to be the foolish friend that allows you to disrespect me or try to bring me harm more than once. And that's it. And I don't, I don't discriminate between friends and family. And I don't have much family. I don't have like any family besides the family that I created. But as far as my family goes, it's my mother and my brother. There is no other family. You know, um, my brother and I had made amends and it's because he didn't even realize he didn't know why we didn't talk. Mm -hmm. He didn't even know why we didn't talk. He had no clue. And then when, when I told him when we had a come to Jesus moment, he was shocked and mortified and didn't remember and apologized profusely for what had happened. You know what I mean? And I forgave him and I love him to death. So now because back, of it, but you, but an apology, the, an apology has to be rendered. So back to the email, what are you suggesting? Um, well, I do think that she should forgive him because I completely believe in forgiveness. Again, I think that she needs to forgive for her, not to absolve him of what he's done. Although that might be a side effect of it, which would be good for him. Um, I disagree with you. Completely, completely. Um, I think that if you are a cheating dad, that makes you a bad dad. Mm -hmm. I think if you are a cheating mom, that makes you a bad mom. Mm -hmm. And I believe that because, like I said during that podcast, when you cheat on your spouse, you're not just cheating on your spouse, you're cheating on your entire family. And this emailer is providing a testimony of that. It hurts. What kid doesn't want to grow up in a family that they can feel? is as close to perfect as their imagination will but take But nobody's them. perfect, though. No, 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 that's why I'm not saying perfect. I'm saying as close to perfect. And by close to perfect, what I mean is that your parents try. Mm -hmm. When you cheat, it shows that you don't try. You have disregarded your family and what the potential outcome of that cheating can create, which is hurt children, children that feel that they might not have been enough to keep you faithful and loyal to that family. I mean, the list goes on. So it doesn't mean that a bad dad can't re redeem himself. Mm -hmm. Anybody can redeem themselves. You know what I mean? It's never an end all be all in these situations, but I think that, you know, some redemption needs to come when it comes to her dad, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and I think that 
the right thing to say would be that they should work on their relationship. His relationship with her mother is different than his relationship with her, yada, yada, yada. But I can't even front and I can't sit here and lie and say something just because it's the right thing to say. I can't tell you how many times I'm sitting in my bed and I'm watching a movie, a TV show, a reality show, something on Netflix or whatever, and there's a cheating parent. And I've seen it in real life amongst friends and blah, blah, blah. And let's say it's a dad that cheats on the, on the mom. I'm my mother's daughter. I have to have your back. Do mm-hmm. you know what I mean? I'm a woman. I'm a female just like you, even if I'm a kid. Like, you're my mother. Um, when I see that fictional character or that real character mm-hmm. being nice to the dad, loving on the dad, getting married and inviting the dad to the wedding and the dad's new wife to the wedding, for me, it feels like a betrayal. Mm. I'm not saying it's not the right thing to do. I'm not judging it. I'm talking about how it feels for me. It feels like a betrayal. And I think that's because my personality is so deep rooted in loyalty. Mm-hmm. Like, and I know that I'm loyal to a fault. Mm-hmm. But if I love you, everything else perishes. Like, it's us. You right, you wrong. Like, you know what I mean? Like, whatever. And if my dad wronged my mom, I would have to be on her side. And even if I forgave him, I am sure that I would probably slight him in many ways just to let him know, like it's, it can't be a hundred percent all good. And that's kind of wrong because I know that that's a form of punishment. And Mm -hmm. when you forgive, um, punishment shouldn't be part of that deal. Mm -hmm. So maybe with my personality, um, if I ever encounter that, that's something that I would have to work on, but it would be very um, difficult for me to just carry on as though it was okay. And as though he didn't completely devastate our family. Well, you got two different ways you can go. You can go gears way. You could go my way, you know, one's from a man's one from a, a woman. So Good luck and keep us posted and let us know how things work out. All right. Mm -hmm. Now let me go to another email. Hey, NV and Gia. Many thanks if you get this email. So I wrote to you guys before and you gave me advice. I was a female with the wife of two years. It's three years now. Well, I took your advice and I did my best with it. And unfortunately, it seems like we are going to be ending our marriage. Since you two are still going strong, clearly this isn't a marriage question, but it is a question nonetheless. I believe you guys are able to fulfill seeing as though I don't have many people in my life to give me honest, thorough advice other than everything is going to be good or you're still alive. So just pray. Anyways, my question is, how am I able to adjust from marriage back to pretty much single and dating life? I'm 25 with no kids. But I'm already having a hard time just understanding my marriage has ended because I've seen so many marriages in my family end. But I've never seen the rebuild process. It has always been getting on to a new person. I want to learn to live for me for a while, possibly purchase a home, envy any tips I would appreciate, uh, and truly enjoy things again as though this is, has taken a big mental and emotional toll on me. Also, What is your take on people who divorce and then reconnect again? I've only heard a few stories and my family would see me as crazy, but I want to be happy. And if the cards fall that way, I don't want to feel crazy for doing it. Sorry for the long email envy, but I just want you to understand my position. If I mentioned again, I would like to be called D. He's nuts. He didn't say that. Anyway, thank you if you get this email. Side note, envy. I don't want this mentioned in the podcast. Oh. Okay. Got you. All right. Well, first and foremost, I would say this, right? Um, first of all, before you, before you say that, do we know, um, I don't. what email Mm-mm. Okay. I don't. that was that he's referring to? Gia yeah, doesn't like when I curse, but I would say this, fuck what everybody thinks. This is all about your life and your situation. If you and your wife get back together, you don't have to worry about how crazy it looks. You don't have to worry about how other family members feel or your friends feel. It's all about your happiness. I think a lot of times we make decisions based on family and friends and how we look on the outside world. We have to make decisions based on how we feel. 
We can't live our lives to somebody else. They live in their lives the way they want to live their lives. So you have to live your life the way you want to live your life. Um, yeah, you don't have, hear too many stories of people leaving and then coming back, but it happens and it happens, I'm sure, a lot. So, I mean, maybe the break is what you guys needed. Maybe you both needed that time apart to realize, hey, I really love this person. I really miss this person. I want to change my ways or she wants to change her ways and make this relationship work. So I would not worry about what other people think. Uh, now is the time to, to get out there once you feel better and see what else is out there. You might put your foot in the water and be like, you know what? I don't like this water. I'm going back to the swamp. That's what I feel more comfortable. <laughs> Why'd you got to be the swamp, I'm though? Just saying, I'm just saying. <laughs> Why'd you can't be the river, the ocean? But whatever. Whatever you want to do. It. But I'm just saying, I would give yourself, I would give myself that. I would go out there and see what's out there, you know? Not to say you got to go out there and dot now or you got to go out and whore now, but I would go out there and give myself a little something, especially when the world opens back up and things are safe. Do things that you enjoy to do. If you're a reader, you know, go to some place where you can go read and maybe you run, bump into somebody reading. If you're a bike rider, you know, take that bike out and go ride and you'll run into and people that do like things like you. You know, if you're a cooker, take some chef classes, do things that are going to make you happy outside of looking for that person. You know, that's what you need to do. Let's say you, you, work, you, you like to work out, go to the gym more. These are the places where you find like minded people and maybe find somebody that you're interested in or maybe it will take you back to your, your girl or your wife. That's what I would do in this situation. But the first thing I wouldn't do, I wouldn't worry about anybody. And that's why people always say, you know, you got to be careful with telling family members and friends your problem, because then when you go back, you look crazy because yep. they're like, this dude did this, this dude did that, this dude did that. Oh, I love him. Like, and they've already formed an opinion exactly. about your significant other based on what you've told them. And that's one thing I would say that Gia and I uh, haven't done when it comes to family. Um, Gia doesn't tell her family members if we got, got into arguments back in the day. And I had never told my family members when we got into arguments back in the day. Um, and we were able to work out our problems and, and everything that's going on. But that's what I would do in your situation. Um, find something that you love and do it, you know, and you might meet somebody doing that and go from there. Um, I think that since he's so young, I think he said he's 25, 20. Yeah, I believe so. Okay. Um, I wish that he told us what the name of the email was because mm -hmm. we've been doing this for a long time. So I'm not really sure exactly which email he's referring to, but I'll base what I have to say on what he just wrote. He's 25. I wouldn't rule out rekindling a flame with an ex, even if it's an ex-wife, because when you're so young, you only know this much. Mm -hmm. And when I was 25, I thought I knew everything. I thought I was a full-fledged adult, which by law you are, but by experience you are not. So you're right. He can get out there and realize that he had something amazing with his wife and want to retreat back in that direction. Or he might realize that the grass really is greener mm -hmm. on the other side. Um, and I think that that can be an issue with getting married so young. Did he say they were married for two years or did yes. I make that up in two, my head? It was three years. He said two years. Three. It's now, three years right? by now. Yep. Okay. So that would put him, what, married at 22-ish mm -hmm. around that. We got married um, when I was 21. No, when I was 22 and you were 23. 23. So we were about the same age. Um, and when you get married so young, the truth of the matter is that you marry inexperienced mm -hmm. and the world has so much to offer. Thank God we worked out and we navigated right. our way through it and we're more in love now than we've ever been. But it doesn't always work out that way. Um, and I wouldn't even necessarily say that we had the tools. We just managed to figure it out. And I think that we had the determination to be together. I don't think that with everything that came our way, I don't think that either of us ever saw a world without each other. Like there was no other way. Um, but everybody doesn't have that, those feelings or have that bond. Um, with us, I felt like there was a glue. So with him, I would say that maybe that lack of experience and maybe that curiosity, um, that lack of living, which I think um, for more people than not is essential before you pledge your entire life and existing and existence to another person. 
I think it's important to get out there and do things, experience many different people, because when you experience many different people, you are given the discernment to know what you like versus what you don't like. This way you don't get in a marriage and realize you don't like something or that that person didn't have the qualities that you ultimately needed and then end up in divorce. Uh, thank God they don't have any children. I didn't. No, they don't. Right. Thank God they don't have any children because if you have children, then you drag kids through that bad decision as well. So now that he's divorced, yeah, I think that he just needs to concentrate on having fun because that's what 25 year olds do. Concentrate on building whatever career that he's um, into and just cultivate a life that is his own. And then once he's standing in his own, then I think he'll have a better idea of what it is that he needs moving forward, whether that be a new person or his wife. All right. Well, mm -hmm. good luck. And hopefully you find happiness. And it seems like you really want the relationship to work out. So hopefully you guys get back together. And if not, I'm um, hopefully that you'll still be happy. All right. Cool. Yes. All right. Let's get to the last email today. Hey, Gia and Envy, I got myself into a pickle. Oh, she didn't say pickle. <laughs> she said, I got myself in a mess and I don't know what to do. I'm a 28 year old nurse partitioner. Partitioner. Practitioner. Do it over. Let's get to another email of the week. Hey, Envy and Gia, I got myself in a mess and I don't know what to do. I'm a 28 year old nurse Practitioner. There you go. I met a man at work. Well, one of the doctors, we became very close working long hours and overnight shifts. Spicy. One conversation led to another and we started sleeping together during the time he filed for separation. February 2020, I found out that I was pregnant with twin boys, Jackson and Hendrix. After suffering two miscarriage terminations, oh, there was no comment there, but she said after suffering two miscarriages, termination was not an option. Whoa. He was fine with that. He was supportive and happy. Then the pandemic came about and he started frequently going to his wife to help her out with the kids. Mm. May 2020, he came and told me she's pregnant and they are going to work things out now. Now, this is where things got ugly. I didn't expect anything from him knowing he was not divorced. He did not tell her or any of his family I was pregnant. Instead, he wanted me to sign an NDA that I will not reveal him as the father of my kids or post him on social media so people from the job won't say they look like him and exchange, he will support them and send me money every month and be active in their life. But he also wants me to move closer to him and pretty much control us. I Wait, I'm sorry. Can you go back to sentences about being active in their life? Say that again. Well, he basically, this is a good one, weeks. Yeah. He says, I was pregnant. Instead, he wanted me to sign an NDA that I will right. not reveal him as the father of my kids or post him on social media so people from the job won't say they look like him. In exchange, oh, excuse me, I got a yawn. Hey, baby, you are. Sorry. In exchange. Uh, look at that. She tried to yawn all sexy. I'm not trying to yawn sexy. I'm trying to, <laughs> see me, I'm I'm trying like, to get it out. And now you just ruined it. Now I got to start over again. You ruined my if, yawn. If you really want, I hate that. If you really want to piss your spouse over when they start to yawn, you start doing stuff like that and they don't let them get the yawn out. Look at it. She can't get the yawn out. <laughs> I will get up and walk away, Rashawn. <laughs> Stop it. I'm not kidding. Just I like to see you walk in. <laughs> Rashawn, you want to make them wait while you play? Right, good, 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 good. Here we go. You can read. Get out. Okay. It's like the yawn orgasm. Like the end of the yawn where it's like the... <sighs> <laughs> Stupid. But that's Go the game. Ahead. Like if you have your spouse, you know, do that with your girl or your I, man. I can they never yawn around him because of that. All right. Now um, she goes, uh, but he also wants me to move closer to him and pretty much control <laughs> us. I am now stuck because I don't want my kids to grow up with, without a father. But on the other hand, how do I keep the secret when my family members are already asking to meet the father of my children? Do I keep my kids a secret for the rest of their lives or do I just let it be known? Since he told me that he no longer will talk to me, but Christmas, he had a Range Rover drop off to my house with a copy of the papers inside. This is getting lengthy and I'm all over the place. What should I do? Should I be alone or tell it all? 
<laughs> yes. Thanks for the name, Jackson. Oh, you're welcome. Oh, that's so sweet. Oh, that's a good I wonder one. if she wait, did she spell it the same way? Yep. Oh sure yay. And I like the name Hendrix. It's pretty dope. What do you think? That was good. And the reason why I needed you to go back and read those sentences over is because my mind was stirring mm -hmm. on the information that you already provided. And I think I blocked you out and I was in my own thoughts. I needed you to go back. <clears throat> what do you think? Okay. So the, well, first of all, congratulations on the Range Rover. Ow, I see you on the road. Four no, dollars, six range. no, no, I don't think that's what she said. Yeah, she sent her a Range Rover for Christmas with all the papers inside. Is that, I, I heard her say that. Yes. Hold on. Whoa. I heard her say, stop that. I heard her say that like a Range Rover showed up with the papers, papers inside. I, I took it as someone pulled up and gave her the paper. They pulled up in a Range Rover. I didn't take it as he gifted her no, that. No, I, I took it no, as a Christmas gift. I mean, I could have it. I could be completely wrong. I'm just telling you how I took it when you read it. You know, he said, but Christmas, he you had a Range Rover dropped off to my house. With a copy of the papers oh, inside. Mm -hmm. Yes, so pick us up. Where we going? Ow, ow. <laughs> no. Oh, for real. All right, now let me think. Let me think. Let me think. Give me a second. Okay, this is what I would do. <laughs> I wouldn't sign an NDA. But now it depends how you feel. If I was in that situation, if it was me, and I had Jackson and Hendrix, and he just brought me a Range Rover. This is what I would do. Are the babies born? Is yeah. she still pregnant? I think she... I guess it doesn't matter. Go ahead. No, no, no. She's still pregnant. Yeah, okay. This is what I would do. I wouldn't sign the NDA. If he didn't want to be part of my children's lives, I wouldn't force him to be. Uh, <clears throat> and I understand that you want him to be a part of your kids' lives, so... This is something, but you don't want you you don't want to force somebody to do that. Um, if you have to force somebody to do that, I think the kids will, will see it. He'll see it. And what? And let's be honest. How's he gonna be? Oh, I'm gonna be a part of the kids' lives, but just don't tell nobody. <clears throat> so how are you gonna take it to the games and nobody gonna know who you are? You know, uh, aren't the kids gonna feel a way that you don't live in mommy's house? Or maybe they'd be like, all right, but aren't the kids gonna feel a way that they never posted on social media? So this is what I would do. I would say, fuck them. Um, I would work out a, a, a number that I would want to make sure that he pays for half those kids, whatever that number is. I would make him pay monthly. Um, <clears throat> and that's what I would do. Um, I wouldn't force anybody. Uh, he was separated from his wife. So, I mean, he didn't cheat if he's telling the truth. And that's what I would do. Nobody's going to make me sign a paper and not to say <laughs> nothing. I'm not going to post. No, I'm posting my kids on my social media because it's my social media. They're my kids. I'm happy. If you don't want to be a part of your kid's life, then fuck you and go do what you got to do. But I am going to show these kids to the world. If their father's a coward and doesn't want to take responsibility of these kids, then his father's a coward. If somebody at the hospital says, hey, that looks like Dr. Professor X, that's on you. <laughs> You know what I mean? If if your wife finds out about these kids, that's on you. If you know, if everybody we work with, your mom, your father, if everybody, that's on you. But I would say <clears throat> I would come up with a number that I think it's fair that he would have to pay for these kids. Nah. Uh, and if he doesn't, then I would take him to court to make sure he does. So he's definitely he's gonna pay whatever number you're gonna want him to pay. Now don't get crazy now. Don't say, oh, I got him on a string. I need a hundred thousand dollars. Don't you know? No, you don't need that. But. Get the number that you think, talk to an attorney, <clears throat> find a number that you think is, is reasonable that will help you take care of your kids. And then you got to think long term. And when I say long term, don't just think, OK, well, no, you got to think clothes. You got to think schooling. You have to think uh, vacations. You have to th uh, daycare, uh, camp. You have to think baseball, sports, activities, saving for college, saving for the future and all that. Range Rovers are good, but your kids can't eat a Range Rover. <clears throat> um, so that's what, how I would plan accordingly. And leave it at that, you know, and that's what I would do. If he never wants to be in his kids' lives, I'm not going to force you, but <clears throat> it is what it is. But I am going to tell my kids the truth. You know, I'm not going to be like, hey, I just got, you know, you know, pregnant by Santa and then he bounced. No, I'm going to say I had a relationship with, <laughs> with a doctor and I'm going to tell my kids the truth so they know I don't need to hide anything. I didn't do anything wrong. I fell in love with the guy. We would, you know, if you did, you know, we were at work with each other. We had relations. You guys were pregnant. He left me. 
I would tell my kids the truth. That's what I would do. What about you? So if I were her, I would be insulted. I hope you're insulted. Um, he is a controlling and self-serving individual. Yes. I would be livid because I would take his actions as him thinking that I was a complete idiot that could be bought. So you pointed out, because I thought differently, that he dropped off a Range Rover with the papers inside. That is him treating her like a complete fool, as though she can be pacified by a vehicle. She's pregnant with twin babies, and this Range Rover is supposed to make all of the difference. That's insulting. I would have sent his Range Rover back. I don't need your Range Rover. What I do need is for you to take care of these children. There would be no agreement. Like, no, at this point, you clearly have mentally tossed me out onto mm -hmm. the street. You don't give a bleep about me. You don't give a bleep about these two babies that we created together. You don't give a bleep about the fact that you're going to be a father because you don't want to be a father in its entirety. If you were separated, in my opinion, and I'm not saying that it's okay to um, engage with someone else during a separation. I think that that is something that is decided upon in individual relationships. You know, like if there's a separation, what does that mean to us? What does that look like between us? Are we seeing other people? Are we just trying to figure ourselves out or whatever? So I'm not judging what people do during a separation. I know that many people do judge that, but I don't. Um, so with that being said, it's as though she was some type of rebound. And like you said, if he's being honest about being separated, because the way that it looks is that he may not have been honest because if it was per their agreement that they could see other people, then he could tell his wife, this is what happened. He probably is either lying or just doesn't want that baggage, which is how he's looking at her as baggage. So there's no niceties at this point. There's no agreement. We're not coming to an agreement. These are your children. We're going to go to court. There's going to be an arrangement made by the court. I don't want to have any type of like little play games with you. Like, no, we're not going to do that. We're, I, I'm not expecting a check and then you forget or your wife saw that. No, 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 no. Like we're going to court. That is going to be on record. That's number one. Number two, keep quiet. What do I, wh and, and why would I do that? What, why would I do that? What is in it for me to keep quiet? What, money? Because that's kind of the implication, right? Like, I'll take care of you if you keep it quiet. I'm a nurse. I make my own money. Like, I don't, I don't need your money. Like, I'm good. I have to live under this cloud of secrecy to protect you because you engage in something that you regret at this point? No, it doesn't work that way. Not at all. I'm not going to adjust my life and be uncomfortable and make my kids uncomfortable. You made your bed. Now you have to sleep in it. Period. So I'm going to tell the world if I choose to do that. I will post pictures. And if someone asks, you are who their father is. Period. And there's nothing else to be said. If you don't like it, that's a problem that you're going to have to contend with, but I have nothing to do with it. That is crazy. And you use the exact perfect word to describe him. Like he's a coward. Like he's not man enough to own what he did, tell his wife, tell his family, accept it as a mistake, make amends if that's called for in his marriage and do what a man does and handle it. So um, if I were her, I would do what was in the best interest of me and my children and any money or gifts wouldn't make a difference. Okay. Well, you see both sides. I wouldn't take him to court. That's just me. Why not? Honestly? Yeah, honestly. He's a jerk. He is a jerk. Um, and whether we go to court or we don't go to court, I don't fuck with you. But 
if I go to court, I might get 5000 a month. If I don't go to court, I get 10000 a month. That's how I look at it. And at the end of the day, it all goes to my kids. <laughs> at the end of the day, it all boils down to greed. That's, that's, that's how I look at it. I, I'm, it's not like I'm, I fuck with you anyway. It's not like I'm trying to make things work. But I know you don't want me to go to court. And if you don't want oh, me to go to court. Oh, so you're going to hold that over his head. I'm, I'm not going to hold it all over his head. I'm just going to ask him what he thinks he should be giving me. But what do you have to do in return? Nothing. Think about that. I'm not going to do you nothing. Ha- Mom all, is the word. All I'm going to do is not go to court. I am going to, I, I am going to post regardless. The only difference is if I go to court, you're in trouble. If I don't go to court, you pay me what you think I deserve. No, and That's then, how I feel. No, because if you don't take him to court, then you have to deal with his whims. You don't. This month, you posted something, then you might get a late check no. or no check at all. Well, this is what I'm trying to explain Then to I you. got to deal with back child support no, no, and having to no, prove what no, you paid no, and what you didn't wrong, pay. You're wrong. You're wrong. I'm telling tell you why. Tell me how I'm wrong. I want to know. I'm why. Because if... I'm in that situation. How did she say because? Because if I'm in that situation, right? Let's just <laughs> That's say. how I say it. And let's say I'm in that situation. Mm-hmm. Which situation? As the woman? As the guy. As the guy. Go ahead. Right? Mm-hmm. There's not going to be a late bill. There's not going to be none of that. Because I know if I'm late one day, What's you go good? to court. Not necessarily. It doesn't matter if I go to court or not. Because according to you, if I'm the doctor, I'm probably going to pay less. That's a feather in my cap. If you take me to court. It has nothing to do with Unless, the money. It has nothing to do with money. Has explain. To, if I'm the doctor, I got it. Right? I got maybe, it. maybe not. I know I, broke I just, doctors. I know broke doctors. I just bought her a Range Rover. I got it. I have it somehow, some way. You just don't buy a Range Rover and don't have it. But let me just say, so if I, agree, be a if I agree on a number, mm-hmm. right, and I'm the doctor and I don't want my wife to find out. This is the point that I'm making. I am going to pay okay. on time. No late fees. No nothing. Here's your $7,000 you every my month point. on the first of the month. You prove my point. Now, hold on. Okay. Right? Mm-hmm. Now, if I have to go to the court, yes, it's going to be a lot less. I don't fuck with you anyway. I don't want you in my life. All I want is you to take care of my your, your part financially. Rashawn, yes. you prove my point. Wow. You said, if I don't want my wife to find out, what I'm talking about is your wife is going to know. Oh, you want my wife to know, you're saying? I mean, I don't care if she knows or okay. not. It doesn't affect me. So but, take the money. But I have your two children. Your wife is going to know. No. Like, that's not going to be hidden under a rock in the forest. Like, I'm your not, wife is going to find I'm out. I'm not going to say you have to hide the rock, but I'm just saying if you go to court. I don't want to hide the rock. You know what I mean. <laughs> I don't want to be in the forest. But you don't be in the forest at all. If you go to court. She'll definitely find out. Wait, wait, I'm, I'm, trying, to, I'm trying to follow your train of thought. What, what I'm saying is this, right? If you take him to court, right? Okay, you take him to court and you get $3,000 a month. Yes. Okay, cool. I'm, he's still not going to fuck with the kids. You're not going to get anything but your $3,000. You That's get a lot more than that, but go ahead. Whatever the money, say it's 7000 That's all you're going to get, $7,000 no. a month. Mm-hmm. He's still not going to fuck with you. You're not going to fuck with him. Okay, cool. Right. So, all right? So. You don't take him to court and you say, okay, give me this amount. Let's say $10,000. Let's say 15000 Whatever. He's going to pay the $15,000 a month. And the only difference is you just don't go to court. That's it. You still do what you want to do. You still post pictures. You, you, you still, he's still not in the kid's life. You just get more money. What makes you think that there's any, if he goes to court, if he doesn't go to court? You, uh, uh. Because if any man was in this situation, right? Yeah. And did not want his wife and family to find out about this situation She's over here. She's going to find out. How? Unless the agreement is that I shut the bleep You don't have to up. shut up. You don't have to shut up. And sign that NDA. She's going to find How? out. Unless we, you call. We work at the same place. I have kids. Those kids are probably going to grow and look. There are probably people at the job that know that we mess around. Now, all of a sudden, I'm pregnant. Hendrix looks just like you. People get to talking. The Christmas party, the Easter egg hunt, the this, the that. The wife is going to find out. The wife is going to find out. Okay. Unless I sign this NDA. You got to sign an NDA. By law or contractually, I'll say, I have to shut the bleep up and I can't post on I can't be a free human. 
I can't be a free you human. You can be a free human. Do what you want to do. Except post Jackson and Hendrix. You can post Jackson and Hendrix. Just don't say I'm the father. I send you the money every month. She, she, Hold on. She said that he said no social media no, posts no, and whatnot telling, that ties him to I'm it. I'm saying allow it to happen. You know why? Oh, Benz, we got a what? A job off in Atlanta? Okay. Oh, the whole family's picking up and going to Atlanta. I'll never see them kids again. Didn't pay and and if he's if if he's willing to get a Range Rover, how much are those kids? Ten thousand a month. Ten thousand times twelve is one hundred and twenty. So you're just saying that you could be bought. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. So um, you got his way and you got my way. <laughs> yes, my husband is a self-proclaimed bird. <laughs> so. Well, you can listen to gear. You I can can't be me. bought. You I'm can't saying, buy me. Get that money, but whatever gear says, get the heat. He, he, he said, get that money. He ain't gonna fuck with you anyway. Get that money. Keep it. It's moving. not about him messing with her. I'm just saying. All it's right. about self respect and dignity, which he's trying to strip her of. Clearly. Right. So there we have it. All right. Well, if you have an email, you can email us as well. <laughs> The Casey Crew at gmail.com. That's T H E E Casey Crew at gmail.com. And for everybody that keeps asking me about real estate and investing, like the young lady that asked earlier, we're actually going to be in Atlanta February 28th. We're holding a real estate seminar where we're going to be breaking down real estate. So if you want to get involved, you want uh, more information, we talk about credit repair, uh, hard money lending, conventional lending, anything that you could possibly manage to get you into that game. February 28th, you can click the link in my bio to find out more information, all right? And everybody else, we'll see you guys next week. I'm DJ Envy. And I am Kia Casey. And that's another edition of the Casey Crew. Toodles.